Hello, this is Mr. Field, and this video is about the noble gases. Now, before you watch this, make sure you're confident on uh, how to determine electron configurations. Um, the alkali metals and the halogens have got videos on all of those things earlier in this playlist if you uh, need to brush up on those. Now, in this video, we're going to look at what the noble gases are, we'll look at their properties, and then we'll look at the uses of the noble gases. So, what are the noble gases? The noble gases are the gases in group zero of the periodic table, which is helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. We're going to just concentrate on the first three, though. Okay. Now, these are all colourless, monoatomic, non-metallic gases. Um, this word monoatomic literally means one atom. And what it means is that in helium gas, for example, we don't have HE2 molecules. We don't have HE3 molecules. We just have individual atoms of helium floating around in the gaseous form. Now, helium has very, very low melting and boiling points. Its melting point is minus 272 degrees Celsius, almost absolute zero, the coldest possible temperature. The boiling point is also extremely low, minus 269, only slightly warmer than that. And as we move on to neon, you can see slightly higher, but still very low melting and boiling points. And again, same for argon, a bit higher now, but still very, very low melting and boiling points. So is there, there's this gradual increase in melting and boiling points as we go down the group, but they are all very low for both. Now, in terms of their structure, all of the noble gases have complete outer shells because they are in group zero. So if we start by looking at helium, helium's got an atomic number of two, which means it's got two electrons in its outer shell. And so it's just got that one shell with that complete first shell. Neon has got 10 electrons. So two in its first shell, eight in its outer shell. Again, another complete outer shell. And then finally, argon, 18 electrons, um, two in the first shell, eight in the second shell, and again, eight in that third shell. So again, we've got that complete outer shell. And that's the characteristic feature of the noble gases. They've all got complete outer shells. Now, in terms of their properties, their properties are really determined by that complete outer shell. And the number one thing that's important about the noble gases is they are inert. They do not do any chemical reactions. That's not quite true if you do a level or, or IB chemistry, you'll learn there's a couple of reactions, but there really aren't many at all. Now, these things have complete outer shells, so they are stable, which is why they don't react with other things. They have no need to gain or lose electrons because they've already got complete shells. Another important thing about them is that they have low density. And the reason why they've got low density is because they are monoatomic. So they're very made out of very, very small particles. Um, argon is a bit more dense, but helium and neon are both much less dense than air. Um, argon is slightly denser than air. Now, these properties help determine the uses of the noble gases, which is what we'll concentrate on on the next. So in terms of the uses of the noble gases, the first one to think about is helium. Now, helium is used in floating balloons, you know, party balloons and those kind of things, and also airships and blimps. We can see an example of that here. Now, the reason why helium is used for this is because it's got very, very low density. So if we fill a balloon with large amounts of helium, it will have less density than the surrounding air, which means it will float up through that air. Now, the other reason helium is good for this is because helium is inert. We used to make airships um, that were filled with hydrogen. But hydrogen is highly explosive and can catch fire. And that's exactly what you can see here. This is a disaster called the Hindenburg disaster, which happened early in the 20th century, when an airship filled with hydrogen that was carrying lots of passengers exploded as it was landing due to a spark igniting all that hydrogen. That can't happen with helium because helium is inert, which makes airships filled with helium much safer. The second example is neon. Now, neon is used in advertising signs like this one here. If you've seen these signs made of sort of red glowing light bulbs, um, that's actually glass tubes filled with neon gas because it glows red 
when electricity is passed through it. Now the last example is argon. Argon is used in fire extinguishing systems. Sometimes you might get a fire extinguisher, like one of those handheld red ones filled with argon, but it's more commonly used in things like data centers. Um, you know, these are the these are the, um, the the big centers where you know Amazon and Google have all their great big racks of computer servers. Now, if there's a fire in one of these places, you do not want to be spraying a load of water around because water will destroy the um, electrical systems. But the inertness of argon means that it doesn't burn. Its high density means that it will sink and displace the air which puts the fire out. And the fact that it's a gas means it does not conduct electricity, which would damage electrical systems. So argon is a really good way of putting out fires in that kind of situation. It's also used in welding to provide an inert atmosphere around a welding flame. Now imagine you've got a, a welding torch trying to join two pieces of hot metal. That metal could be so hot, it starts to react with oxygen in the air. So they surround it with a kind of blanket of, um, of argon gas, because that prevents the oxidation of that hot metal. Okay, so that's it, the end. As always, thank you for listening, and well done if you got this far.